Hello everyone, my name is Javen and welcome to my Hero Engine tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to cover part 3 of the terrain editor. So make sure your terrain editor is open. If not, go to Windows, Terrain, over here. Select the terrain icon. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is paint texture. Now you can have up to four layers of uh, textures. However, we are just going to add a new one to our layer one. And we we'll just click add and then generic grass and moss and prairie grass. Alright, now here we can assign it to a new layer if we would like. But we're just going to leave it in layer one. And you can adjust the UV scale and we'll paint. Let's uh, set this to the max hardness so you can see this. Alright. And we can adjust the UV scale. As well, you can manually set a value. And you can unlock this so your bump and spec scale can be different from your diffuse. Uh, the prairie grass, I do believe, does not have... Oh, it does have a normal, but it's not really much in the way of a normal. Um, I'm just going to clear that. Okay, so... The next tool I want to talk about is paint color. Now this is very useful for say if we set this to white two five. Sorry, we'll just there we go. We'll just leave it right here at solid white. We can make our textures very bright as if they're glowing. Or we can add like a let's see a little bit of blue to them. This is very useful for uh, getting your textures to match, you know, the world or the style that you're doing. Uh, you don't have to do this, but uh, if you do choose to do this, make sure that you remove um, any form of shading from your textures. Otherwise, when you do this, it may come out a bit weird. But most textures, if you pull them off CG textures, should be fine. All right. The next tool we're going to talk about is paint dynamic details and you can see we already technically have one here. And this is some rather nasty looking weeds. We'll change this for not seaweed. Here we go, we'll change it to this grass. Alright. Now as you can see, We have a lot of billboard grass in here. All right, if we scroll down, we have some additional uh, panels. We'll check real-time update. So now we can adjust the density. We can make them smaller, or we can make them really, really tall for the player to run around in. I'll turn these down just a little bit up the density, and then we can adjust the scale variation and the strength of it. As well, you can adjust the hue and the variation of that as well. And you can do the same thing for saturation. I missed a bit there. Now we're creating some pretty wonky looking tuning grass here. But that's okay. Okay. Now you can change the rotational axis. You can set it to none. And then you just get ever so lovely billboards. We can set it back to XY and it will smooth. <clears throat> and you should probably just leave it at XY depending on what you're done with it. Because as you can see, setting it to none, it'll just face the camera. Like typical billboards, it looks pretty rather ugly. And you can adjust the variation frequency of it. Alright, and if you go to environment, if you don't have the environment panel, go to windows, environment, then go to wind, up the gust, oh, up the strength, frequency of the gust to occur, and gust strength, then we'll go back to terrain, and you can see now that our grass is fully swaying, we'll turn this down just a little bit, so it looks a little bit more real.
All right, and distance is the distance that it will render. We'll set it to 22. Now as we fade out, it'll... Uh, you probably don't always want to keep this at 100 because once you have a fully set up scene, if you have a large open area, it might kind of start slowing down most of your player's target machines. And this, we can adjust the transparency. So we can keep it at, like, say, 33, and then it looks very faint. I like to keep it a bit lower because I actually like to be able to see my grass. Okay, the next thing is clone. And this works pretty simple. You shift copy, shift click to copy, and then here real quickly. It's kind of in the way a little bit. Alright. Switch back over to this. And it should be able to copy all of our dynamic details. <laughs> well, it didn't work so well, but uh, normally, when you do this, it will uh, you'll be able to copy the whatever you have click dragged. All right, <laughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> the next tool we have is the eraser tool, and this essentially allows you to edit and erase whatever you would like. Uh, you can adjust the texture layers, the color, and the dynamic details. Or you can set all set none. I'm put this back. And the next and final tool we're going to talk about is select vertices. So as you can see, we've selected all these vertices here. And now if we say select the raise and lower tool, you will notice that we can only edit the vertices that we selected. This is a very useful tool. And as you can see, we can't edit over here as much as we would love to. get all that back. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. If you have any and obviously you want to shift click to get rid of it. If you have any uh, questions um, Alright, so if you have any questions, stop by my forums or the Hero Engine forums. And if you'd like to, you can follow me on Twitter and keep up to date with when the next tutorial is coming out as well. Uh, if you have any suggestions for any new tutorials, send me a PM on YouTube or there's a thread on the Hero Engine forums that you can stop by and give me some suggestions. I know you guys are wanting a uh, dynamic character tutorial and that will be coming up soon. I'm just in the process of uh, getting an actual character mesh so I can begin actually making that tutorial. Thank you.